On this edition of In Life, we'll take a look at barns. We'll explore this restored barn here in Camp Point, and we'll tour an exhibit at the Gardner Museum of Architecture and Design. That's coming up on In Life. This program is brought to you in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and through the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Funding for art segments on In Life is provided by the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. For settlers moving into the open spaces of Illinois more than 150 years ago, their barn was just as important as their home. While today's barns are built more for function than they are form, up until the middle of the last century, barns incorporated a certain amount of style using architectural aspects commonly found in houses and commercial buildings. We begin our exploration of barns at the temporary site of Quincy's Gardner Museum, where curator Vicki Ebbing explains the various styles of barns seen in the region. This exhibit is not the first time for it to be on display, right? That's correct. Tell me about the first time and why it's come back. In 1992, Paul Larson was a curator of the museum and he traveled to Pennsylvania on a trip, um, family vacation, mm -hmm. and saw all the barns that Pennsylvania is famous for. Well, he had been around Quincy long enough to know that we have a lot of barns here and he felt they were equally as beautiful as the barns in Pennsylvania. So. We have, he put together this barn exhibit in 1992. And why did, why did you bring it back? Again? The Adams County Association of Museums decided to have a collaborative effort this year and feature the barns and farms of Adams County. So the, the photographs that Paul had were in storage in the museum and we decided to get them out and dust them off and mm -hmm. put them back up and, and it's, it's a wonderful exhibit. We're very happy to have it here. We've added to and deleted mm -hmm. from, but you know, for the most part, it, this is the exhibit that was across the street. And you have some interesting farm implements. Yes, we do. Too, here to yes, see we do. barn wood and it's all uh -huh. very well done. Yes. How is it going over with the public? Are the, they... We have good turnouts, especially mm -hmm. on rainy days when the farmers can't <laughs> farm. A few of those. Yes, <laughs> so we've had a good turnout from, from the farming community and also from people in Quincy who want to know more about about the agricultural heritage that we have in this All right. area. All right, well, why don't you show me a few of your favorite barns? Okay. All right. This is the Gambrel Roof Barn, and these barns are the newest style of barns in, in the United States. Most people, when they think of a barn, this is what they think right. of. Right, yeah, I think of this as just your classic picture of a barn. That's right. And and there are so many other styles, so that mm -hmm. was the reason that we decided to put up the exhibit again, so to educate the public on all the other styles. Is this the, the majority of barns that are in Adams County, are they this gambrel roof t style? or? Actually, they aren't. We have mm -hmm. a lot of other styles. These are, Adams County was um, established early in the 18th century. A lot of these barns are early 18th century, so they are, here we are. And these are these are your later barns. Is, and there, is there anything about this style that, um, from a standpoint of function, was an advantage? It was often used as a dairy barn. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason is that you can store more hay up in the hayloft, it has a higher hayloft than the other barns. So they, you know, if you had a lot of dairy cows, which in order to be a good dairy farmer, you had to have a lot of cows. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> and you needed a lot of hay in the winter time when the snow was on the ground. This is the Pennsylvania style barn mm -hmm. in Adams County. And um, these barns are also known as a German style barn. What makes it a, a Pennsylvania style barn? What are the features that? Well, it, it, this particular photograph is not a really good one to feature, but mm -hmm. they, they have the, the drive comes in, see how it is here? Well, the drive comes in on the other side and goes through, and that 
coming in the broad side of the barn is what what makes it that that okay. particular style and they usually have a ramp going into them mm -hmm. so it's easy to get in but also the open back here where the livestock can come in underneath that's also a, an indicator of that particular style and how long has this style been around well the reason that it's called german style is that it came over this okay. style came over from mm -hmm. Germany, so it's been right. around a long, long time. These are these are very old style barns. And where is this barn located? I know it's in Adams County, but it's in Gilmer Township, mm -hmm. and it is one of the most picturesque barns in in Adams County. The setting where it's where it's been built is just spectacular. Do you know anything about the history of the barn? Um, the person who built it was a German-born shoemaker, uh -huh. and he turned to farming and built this. This barn is 42 by 48, okay. and um, you know it's it's just a beautiful barn. It is. It's very very picturesque. Mm -hmm. These are transverse barns, and the reason they're called transverse barns is, is the drive enters from the side, and then on the side there's a there's an area where they keep the livestock. Mm -hmm. so, so they're a little bit different from uh, the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania barn uh -huh. in that the drive is on a different part of the barn. That's right. That's what makes them different. So mm -hmm. that's the whole deal on that. It's they're beautiful barns though, and they and they store a lot of hay, mm -hmm. apples. Of you know whatever whatever it is the farmers need to store that's what they were generally used for. And where did this style of barn come from? It came actually as most styles um, from the East Coast, and as as civilization moved further and further west, this came along with them. This is the Western barn, and often these barns were. Um, used for horses. Uh -huh. People would store, would stable their horses in them. This particular barn has the stable, the stable keeper's quarters, and then down here you can see where each of the horse stalls were, where the horse could actually stick his head out the window <laughs> if he wanted to. That's a really long barn. Yes, That's probably, is. I don't know, 10, 15 different stalls down there. Yes. So that really stretches for it, a while. It's, very, it's a very large barn. They, the roof line comes down further because they store a lot more in these, and they also kept their animals in these barns. So, they, in the out, the reason they're called the Western barns is you find a lot of these further west than Illinois, and the the hailstorms and all of that in the prairies. A lot of times they would keep their animals inside during bad weather. So not only did they store the feed, but they also stored a lot of, it had a lot of animal housing right, in it. Right, right. Kept okay. the livestock in the barns. Do you, know, do you know anything about how the uh, interior of the barn was arranged? Generally, there was still the center drive down the mm -hmm. center, and then the stables or the stalls, stalls uh -huh. were off to the side okay. where, the, where the animals were. And then did it have the classic hayloft mm -hmm. up above? They had the hayloft. Mm -hmm. and. Most of them, well, this one has glass up there, but most of them, if you look closely, you can see the hay door that opens, and then there's sure. the, the pulley system that they pulled the hay up. Vicki, what's the most popular style of barn here in Adams County? The most popular style of barn in Adams County is the English barn, and it is a two-story barn. It has the center, the center bay, and three bays, it's three bays wide. Um, they came from the East Coast, just like the other barns, but this is the most popular style here because I think because they could store more mm -hmm. in them. Well, and they look like they have the concrete foundation or the brick stone, foundation, stone foundation. Native right? stone foundations. In most mm -hmm. barns, most of the old barns in Adams County have the native stone foundations because limestone is so easy to find here. Mm -hmm. So, are many of these barns still working barns today, or some of them? So, some of them are gone, mm -hmm. but most of them are, st if they're still standing, they're still in use. They, they use them to still store a lot of hay, mm -hmm. a lot of feed, um, some use them to store farm implements, um, and some of them still have livestock. Is there any history to the cupola? The cupola is actually a very interesting piece. It is used in not only in barns, but also in houses. Mm -hmm. And it, what it does is it lets the hot air and the gas escape naturally. And it, it was a form of air conditioning. In barns particularly, 
cupolas are very popular because they do let out the gas that comes from manure mm -hmm. and hay. It helps dry the hay so that, you know, as you let the moisture and everything out, the hay condenses down and you can store more in there. It almost seems to be an artistic point in the barns, a little place where they went, oh, I get fancy here. Yes, <laughs> and they, often they did. Unfortunately, that particular area in a lot of barns was a weak point because it was an opening and the, mm. and the fret work and the detailing and all of that made it very fragile. And it was also very hard to get to, to maintain. Right. And so in some barns they've been removed the, and where they've been removed you'll see a little sag in the roof line because there was a little rotting going on. Sure. So, you know, it's sad, but they, they were very functional. With so many barns over so many years, we found one expert to give us some insight, barn enthusiast Bob Sherman. Um, you know, form follows function. And, and a farmer, if the barn doesn't function the way he is, he doesn't want it. And, and that's, you know, that's, everybody attribute that stuff to, uh, to Louis Sullivan, that statement, but the Egyptians and the early Greeks were using that, that uh, information for a long time, you know, that if it doesn't function, there's no need what the form is. And, and you find, like, there's a great barn up in Adair, which is in Macomb County, or McDonough County, and um, it's a shing shingle style, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's got brackets, and, and, and yet the whole farmstead isn't on the register, just the barn is. And to me, the whole farmstead should be because it's all intricate part of, of the farmstead. And you know, you th basically you look at the barn and you say, that's the office for the farm. You know, that's, that's, where, the, that's where the money's made for this farm. It's in the barn and with the barn. Um, and yeah, you, or you find um, structures that are, are done for pretty, you know, like uh, horse barns or something that a guy is, got more money than cents sometimes to put into his barn and um, you'll, you'll find that you'll find that um, mostly in urban settings rather than in in the rural settings but you know occasionally you'll find uh, an eccentric person that says I want a round barn and I want only only black animals and I only want you know and you and that's that's there is a case like that in Illinois so it's it's interesting you got black cows you know, black pigs, black chickens, black dog, you know, and the whole bit. So it's like, okay, but that's what he wanted. For a look at a barn that got a new lease on life, we went to Camp Point, where a nearly 100-year-old barn got more than a fresh coat of paint. Built in 1912, this barn sits on the farmstead of Jeff and Shelley Rashi. Jeff's full-time job as a minister helped him bring a little patience to the project as a first-time barn rehabber. You saw this place and clearly it got mm -hmm. under your skin. Yes. What, what was your inspiration for deciding to take this project on and completely refurbish this barn? Well, it was just, it was such a beautiful barn mm -hmm. and, and my wife and I have always been people that like to finish up antiques and, and we've just always valued that. And we knew we wanted to live here and it would have been a, a pity to just watch this thing fall apart. It was, it was just to the stage of uh, having problems when, right after we got it. We had just signed for the property, and within a week, the first board fell off the side of the building. <laughs> and that was a sign to you? <laughs> that was a sign. That we, Yes, it was uh, definitely a little panic attack. Like, yeah. this thing's falling apart already. Right. And so I went up, and, of course, one of the beams up in the windows had rotted, and the, and the board had just fallen away in a storm, mm -hmm. and all the rest of them were loose, too. Yeah. So as I got to looking at it, I thought, well, it looks like I have to replace this beam, which mm -hmm. means all the siding has to come off and work on the windows. And so it was just a lot of actual uh, work that had to be done, you know, because that one board falling off. <laughs> so you made your list. Where did you start? What was your first place to... To begin. Well, the first thing we did was in the in this room back here, uh, there was a place you could drive a car through the roof. It was the, the roof was missing, mm. the rafters were missing, the beams were missing, and so we thought that was our priority. Um, yeah. So after I fixed that window area, we moved back here to that area and wanted it to be a usable space. And and so then uh, we at the same time we were working on the uh, finding somebody to do the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, because the roof was too steep for us to handle. And there were some roofers that wouldn't even bid on it. They didn't want to tackle that roof. It's a little high. <laughs> it, it's high <laughs> and it's very steep. Uh 
-huh. um, but we found a group of people that, um, some of the Mennonites in the area uh, that would do it, and so they came to, to do it. And about that time, our neighbor down the road, uh, Max Dickoot, his great uncle had originally owned this barn, and he came and he brought us a picture of the way the barn used to look in 1912, and we discovered that it had a cupola on top of it. And so right away, my wife and I both thought, gosh, we need to put a new cupola on it because it just had a metal vent. Yeah. And so um, we got to measuring and figuring out, well, how, how big was this? And you could see in the picture that it had fish scale shingles on the sides, and it had double hung, two pairs of double hung windows on each exposure and a hip roof. Well, I'd never made a hip roof before, so so we started doing drawings, and, yeah. and it's it's like seven feet wide by seven feet wide, so it's almost like a little house that had to be... How did you know how big to make it? You didn't crawl up there and measure that. No, I started trying to build scaffolding right here all the way up to there, but it's, uh, it's about 36 feet up there, and I started feeling tenuous <laughs> 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 on the scaffolding, yes. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, we ended up, I uh, built scaffolding on each side and went up and measured the bottom parts of the main beams that held it up. Mm -hmm. And and then we also looked at the photograph and and used a ruler to figure out how, we knew how wide the roof was, so we just divided it out and figured out it was about seven feet. But we needed it closer to the inch. Mm -hmm. And anyway, the bottoms of the beams, when they come down up here, there was an inch variance. Um, from one side to the other. And, were you and, amazed that you were that close? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. So so we just built it with four by four beams on the corners, thinking that once the roofers actually got up there with it and a crane took it up when it was done on the ground, and yeah. the crane took it up, that way they could just use a saw and slice away the interior parts of the legs, just let it slide right in over the beams. So it just sits on top of the old beams where mm -hmm. the old cupola used to sit. Well, it looks like it's always been there. It's fits so well. Well, thank you. It, it's We tried to make it to match the photograph mm -hmm. and um, we had to go to Bloomington uh, to find 16 matching two foot by two foot old sash windows <laughs> and I mean it was just hard to find 16 sure. of them that all matched and then, and then we made the casings for them and, and the fish scale shingles. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are very expensive to just buy so we found a place that sold old cedar siding and they had leftover pieces, so we took those and cut them into four inch strips and then used a saw and cut them into fish scales <laughs> and put them all on there. Wow, so <laughs> a little bit fun. of ingenuity to, to get that yeah. accomplished. Yeah. Um, a lot of the boards, like um, over in that area by the water pump, mm -hmm. a lot of those boards had rotted and were even just missing. You could you could actually step from the outside to the inside right through the hole in the wall there. And so I wanted to replace those with actual old barn boards, yeah. not new boards. So, you know, we searched around and found some barn boards that were the right thickness and looked about like those. And so, you know, now when you look at it, it's very hard to tell which ones are replacements and which mm -hmm. ones aren't. And and that was on purpose. I mean we so we were trying to be picky about what, what we put back. And then there were lots and lots of batten strips missing or broken on the barn. And then, of course, water starts coming in the gap right. that way. Right. So we replaced all of those. And then we had a big lift. Uh, it would go up to 40 feet high. And, and <clears throat> we rented it for a week. And so during that week, we, we worked all day from the first light until dark. And then we had halogen lights, and we'd put them out. And our goal was to finish one side each day as far as... Uh, the high, just the high work mm -hmm. of scraping it and getting a coat of paint on. It went all the way around the barn and all the way around again for the second coat. And, and that's how we got it painted once we had all the carpentry done and the repairs. So Incredible dedication. It was, <laughs> I took vacation time and yeah. we just, that's what we did. But it, it was really, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean. Now there's we, some work that you've done up in the loft too. Why don't you take me up there okay. and we'll, we'll take a look. That'd be great. So watch your step. All right. That's that's the that's the beam over there that was rotten and the first board I had to replace. And you can see, I'm I'm not very happy actually with. Uh, you can see the board that was replaced there. Uh, 
<clears throat> I'm a little out of breath from coming up the stairs. But <laughs> 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 anyway, um, <clears throat> so I, I learned from that and thought it's really mm -hmm. better to find boards that really match the, the basic color and uh, look. And so anyway, but that's how it ended up getting fixed. Um, now you had said that this barn was originally built by a shipbuilder, is that correct? Yes, yeah, a shipbuilder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm told uh, that his name was Lambert Huber, and he built a number of other buildings in, in the area, uh, including the round barn that's up at the fairgrounds, uh -huh. Lewis barn. Um, but one of the neat features you can see up here is right, right here, for example, um, you notice, I mean, all these, all these tail ends of the rafters, mm -hmm. You know, he could have just left those squared, but you know, this is an example. He just he just curved all of these in a really graceful curve all along. You can sight right along them, and they're just impeccable. Interesting touch, but you can see that that kind of boat effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It looks like a, a boat. <clears throat> and then, uh, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> the the rafter tails outside also curve, mm -hmm. and he put crown molding on, and even curved the crown molding on those, which is really unusual for a barn. Yeah, a little over the top for just that yeah. part, front part of the barn. It wasn't just for functionality, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and then he also, uh, there, there's two roofs, small one. There's one right here that goes down, and the one on the other side, too, mm -hmm. that covers the track of the main door. And, and instead of just putting a little piece of metal over it to protect the, the bar that the door slides mm -hmm. on, um, he built this whole roof that, over it that has this gentle slope. I mean, it's it's almost crazy, you know, to, yeah. to do that much yeah. that much work for just that one thing. But the whole roof only covers about six inches. Yeah. Um, but it's probably four or five feet tall and this long slope. And that was one of the things too. Like back here, um, a lot of these boards. This was a place too. There was a hole in the building. Uh, there was a lot of rotting here. You can see a lot that this beam here is pretty well, this is the western exposure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of rotting on it. And the, <clears throat> the boards that were underneath it were rotted. So I had to replace a lot of them. And then unfortunately this is where all those shake shingles of that long sloped roof were mounted. And so a lot of them were just missing. Yeah. So we had to go find shake shingles and re once the structure was rebuilt then rebuild the you know, put new shake shingles on and then get it all painted up again. And, mm -hmm. and um, so that was a new experience, too. I'd never done a curved shake shingle roof before. <laughs> You've learned a lot. So, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I mean, I enjoy it, actually, yeah. Um, and another interesting feature up here, mm -hmm. I think, there's yes. a grain bin underneath this floor. Um, this whole area of the barn, of course, it was a hay barn, but this whole area right here was a grain bin. And so underneath these doors, they have, uh, <clears throat> um, they could just shovel grain down in there and they could fill the whole room under there. Uh, right now it has uh, uh, some insulation and drywall under it that someone mm -hmm. else put under there and they made it into a tack room for horses. Uh -huh. But for, you know, for our purposes now, it's storage and we'll eventually take all that out, I think. And, it just be put it back to, to its original. We're thinking about doing that. Yes. Set up. Yeah. That's a lot of grain. I mean, to fill that whole area down there. That it's a whole lot, lot isn't grain. it? Yeah. It would it would feed a lot of cattle or right. Or they probably had some horses too. Mm -hmm. um, Are there then, any other interesting features up here that? You well, know, this chute yeah. is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. This. This it was not part of the original barn. It had the same set of windows going across originally. And then someone added this chute and the lean-to structure down below. And they, they took two of the sets of windows and put them in the chute, but then the other two are just now gone. So oh, yeah. they're out there somewhere. But <laughs> anyway, um, I guess they could take their hay and throw it down the chute. And there was a, a attic in the in this part of the, or like a little loft. What about these windows? Were they, they originally in the barn? Yes, these, these all were. Um, it's, it's really an unusual barn, I think, in that way. I, at least we've been looking around and haven't, haven't seen other barns that have this many windows mm -hmm. in them yet. It's, and I'm not sure what their thinking was on that other than just style or 
maybe ventilation, right. but they're all working double hung windows. And there's 28 panes of glass in each sash. And there's a total of, of course, then there's uh, four sets of sashes on each side. And then, so anyway, there's a total of 840 individual panes of glass up here. <laughs> and that's, that's counting the fact that there's two sashes missing because of the, mm -hmm. of the chute over there. Did you have so, to individually make those? Well, the, a lot of the individual pieces of glass were missing. Yeah. A lot of them had been target practice for people over the years and stuff like that. So we replaced a lot of pieces of glass and then we also um, had to re-caulk all those sashes, take them all down and one at a time. And, and so anyway, we got it to where they'll all stay in. And, and I tried to shore everything up so that it was good and solid. Some of the window sashes have been rattling and mm -hmm. things. And so. That's an amazing amount yeah, of work. It, it was. Yeah, my, my wife's very tenacious and good with detail work. Mm -hmm. And so she would get all of them all cleaned up around every little pane of glass. And, mm. and she or I would cut the glass to the right size and got it wow. done. But so where do you go from was, here? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well it, it need, the floor needs to be swept. <laughs> I think you could do that yeah. maybe the next day or two. <laughs> we'll try Jeff. to get it done. <laughs> no, we meant to before you got here. We just ran out of time. <laughs> anyway. This barn is one of a dozen or so that will make up the museum's barn tour. For one day later this summer, barn lovers will be able to hop aboard a bus and head out to barns throughout western Illinois. That's all we have time for on this edition of In Life. We'd like to thank Vicki Ebbing, Jeff and Shelley Rashi, and Bob Sherman for their time. For all of us, I'm Becky Cramblett. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, email us at inlife at wsec.tv. This program is brought to you in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and through the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Funding for art segments on In Life is provided by the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. For a copy of the program you've just seen, send $19.95 for VHS or $24.95 for DVD to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and the date the program aired. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.